Yeah, hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for marmoworld.com. My name is Matthias and today I show you how Andra and me created the following Tetris clip. What I, I, I don't have, um, please, no, 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 I just need 10,000 more points for the high score, but can you just leave me alone for like 10 minutes in this household, I really have no privacy, it's uh, 10,000 points. The tutorial consists of two parts and in the first part we are going to track our shot in Mocha. If you think, oh, I've seen already a thousand tutorials where I track something in Mocha, I know how to do this, here we do something special. Namely, since we wanted this video to have kind of a YouTube, very shaky, blurry look, it is quite hard to track and therefore we cover also how to use the adjust track module to improve the track. And this is very crucial here and something definitely worth learning. Then, in the second part, we're going right into After Effects to create these Tetris bricks. And also there, you might think, oh, the animation is not too complicated, I can keyframe all of this. But I'm going to show you how to use the Beat Assistant and also Key Tweak to do the keyframing of these movements of these bricks much, much faster than you might expect. Okay, but now let's start with the first part and tracking in Mocha. Okay, here we are now in After Effects and I have here my footage and drag it to this icon to get a new composition. And if you look at the footage, we can see it starts at the point where I hit the wall here, because only after this point we need to uh, modify the video. So only here, this is the area that we need to track. We go to Mocha Import Plus, select our clip and click on Track in Mocha. Now it opens uh, Mocha for After Effects and um, so you can see that here at the very beginning the clip is quite shaky and quite difficult to track and therefore I prefer to start tracking from the, from the very end. And so what I do is I go to this tool to draw a shape around the area that I want to track. So I just select here a part of the wall uh, right click to finish and with the X key selected I can move here and I can extend it a bit to the top such that when later these parts of the wall get revealed say they get tracked too. And another thing that I need to do is to enable the perspective and maybe I can also increase here the minimum percentage pixels used which uh, hopefully yields a better accuracy in the track. And then I click track backwards and now you can see uh, the wall is tracked and since this clip is pretty long 1260 frames this takes quite a while and uh, since I don't want you to wait I've used my time machine now and jumped ahead in time to the point where the track is finished and um, now we want to know how good this track is so we select our layer let me enlarge this here a bit and click on this icon to make the surface rectangle visible. And now this surface rectangle, you can take the points and adjust them. And we go again to the end of the track where we started. And I want to set them to points that we can clearly identify. Yeah, we, I want to go here really to the corners of these, um, oops, need to reselect the layer, to, to, to the 
corners here at the wall that we can really precisely identify whether these points stay where they are or not. Yeah, from the shape it looked like the track was quite decent, the shape followed the wall quite well. But now if I scroll here over time you can see the blue surface rectangle also nicely follows. But here at this point already the lower part is a bit offset, so this corner is not uh, fitting exactly anymore and also this one. So probably there were a few frames in between here where you can see it's heavily motion blurred and at that point the tracker got a little bit inaccurate and instead of trying to track this with another search area or so what we are going to use is the adjust track feature. So before we go to the adjust track feature uh, tab make sure that you have set your surface rectangle at four corners that you can easily correct, yeah, that you can easily identify whether they are placed correctly or not. So if I would have placed them here and here it would have difficult to spot whether they are one or two pixel offset it. But here if I go right to the corners and note here this um, zoomed view, yeah, if we put them right to the corners then this is something we can easily um, see and make sure that they, they should be visible really most of the most of the time, yeah, which is for these four corners here definitely the case. So then we go to the adjust track tab and click first on uh, set master all. Yeah, this is gray here because I clicked it actually already before. Uh, but this means this is now the like the reference frame for all other frames that all, all other frames are compared to. And if you go now to other frames here, you can see in this area here we have the master frame, which is this very last frame that we've set via set master all. And here's a current frame. And you can see whether the position is still where it should be or not. And for this corner here, this frame still looks good. And if we go further, you can see here it gets a bit blurry. And after this blur, here it's offset it. It doesn't fit anymore. Yeah? What we therefore do is we go to the last frame where it was more or less correct. This was this one. And I click on up and down just to uh, set a keyframe. Yeah, it's like moving a tenth of a pixel up and down again, which sets here a keyframe. So we essentially keyframe now the surface rectangle to get our track better. And I do this for all four corners. Yeah. We can actually also click auto instead. Auto tries to place this here as good as possible and you can see it moves it a little bit. So it even corrects at this point in time. Here I click auto and here I click auto and here you don't see really much of a result for this auto except that you get these keyframes. But if we now go to the point here where it's off yeah, you could move manually your point where it should. So now it's slightly off a bit and we can grab our point here and move it exactly where it should be. You can also move it, of course this is not, not, not exactly where it should be, you could do it with these buttons here. You can do very small movements. Yeah. Another thing you can do is if it's off, you can just click the auto button which tries to do it for you and it's pretty well. Yeah, You can see this is our reference frame and this is the current frame and it placed it pretty nicely. So this is the best actually to do most of the time to just click all those four corners, click on the auto button to set them properly where they should belong and you can see it adjusts everything. And from this point on the track was again quite well and you can see here the corners again are exactly where they should be and look pretty nice. Yeah? And here we have again some heavy motion blur and after the motion blur again it's offset it. So we click here, click on auto and you can see this time auto fails because it's rather large distance to where it should be. In this case we need to manually move it at least close to the point where it should be and then click auto and this time auto again does the right thing. For this corner again we try auto, auto failed, it sets it to the wrong point so we move it very close to where it should be, click auto and it jumps in place. Here at this point in time the top two corners are out of frame. Yeah. Uh, so if we move it up and select our layer again you can see they are not visible at the moment so we cannot use auto really to position this uh, this point here because it's out of the visible area. 
Anyway, we still want to have a keyframe here because I have experienced that it's really a good idea to have keyframes for all four corners always and not just for one of them. So therefore I just click up and down and then I get a keyframe. I can see I go on this corner. Currently there's no keyframe for this corner, so no green dot. I click on up and down, which essentially meant I haven't moved the corner at all, but I have now a keyframe here. Okay, now you can see we have many keyframes here and I've very accurately corrected our track. And now the problem is, okay, we want to export a corner pin, but we don't want to export exactly this region here. Yeah? Usually with this blue surface rectangle, you set the corner pin area that you want to export. And now we want to export a much larger area but I don't want to change this surface rectangle here anymore because I used it for correcting. Yeah. So the easiest and cleanest thing that you can do then is to just create a new layer. Yeah. Currently we have just one layer here that I already renamed to track. And now I just do a second layer by choosing this X-spline tool and drawing some spline that doesn't matter at all. It's just, I right click to finish. You can see this spline lives now on a separate layer. Yeah, layer three and let's rename this, double click to uh, export. And currently, if you move over time, you can see it doesn't move at all. It has its own surface rectangle and the surface rectangle is not moving at all. And now comes the trick. We select this layer and say link to track, track, your track was this layer here. So now this thing is linked to this wall track and you can see it also moves with it. Yeah, you can see now here the surface rectangle is moving. And now if I again select this layer and click on link to adjusted track, it means it doesn't take the original track from this layer, but it takes the track that we have corrected. Yeah? So this is very nice because now this layer's track is identical to the corrected track of this one, but we still have here our surface rectangle that we can set as we want. Yeah, so which means we can um, set it here to to the corners like this and maybe like this. Let's choose this corner here. Um, I just do it like this because I want it to align precisely with with the wall. Yeah, that makes stuff much easier for us later. Now I can grab these corners here and enlarge them. So for example, if we do it like this, and now we go over in time, you can see from the beginning to the end, it's pretty solid at exactly these positions. Yeah. So although our surface rectangle from the beginning that we corrected is another one than this one, uh, still the correction now also acts on this surface here. So this is pretty nice. And now we can really make it as large as we need. So here we see the lower end of our wall. And let me see where we see the top. Here we see the top. So we enlarge the top as we need it. And we go here up until the corner. And now this is like the region that we need to modify. So this is the region that we want to export. But what we want to do with this region is we want to create a stabilized precomp with Mocha import. And stabilized precomps always have the same size as the original footage, yeah, which means this size here, so this is a 16 to 9 uh, um, format, which means it is much wider than it is high. If you look at our surface, it is much higher than it is wide. Yeah? If we zoom out, you can see it's, it's very high, but not very wide. So this means the Precomp will look quite stretched and strange. And to avoid this, we simply enlarge our region here until we have the feeling it's roughly a 16 to 9 format. You're roughly quite a bit wider than it is high. And I think this is a nice uh, region. And now it nicely moves, you can see, with, with our track, with our corrected track. So all that is left now is we can export the tracking data. So make sure you have your export this layer selected because if we have the track layer selected it will only export this data but we need this one go to export tracking data and then as a file format you choose 
corner pin, after effects corner pin, corner pin only, which supports mocha import, which is what we need. Yeah. Then you go on save. I skip this because I have saved the file before and now we can go to after effects. So here we are now in after effects and I first rename my layer here into background. Then I duplicate this by clicking Control D and the duplicate I call wall. And for this wall, I now load the tracking data. I do this by clicking here on load and then I choose the file that I've saved from Mocha. Yeah, the corner pin, track and now it asks me which layer did you track, yeah? which clip did you track. Uh, actually I can choose here the wall or the background and in this case it doesn't matter because yeah, the two are identical. In case you would have had other layers in your composition, make sure to, to choose actually the clip that you've tracked. Now it shows me that I have loaded corner pin data, yeah, corner pin only, this green light here shows it. And what do we want to do with this data? We want to create a stabilized precomp. Now you can see also that stabilized precomps can only be created with corner pin only and not with this motion blur corner pin. So don't use the motion blur corner pin because this one is, is red here. Yeah, for stabilized precomps, load or export in Mocha corner pin only. And then we select our wall layer and click on apply. And now it asks me what corner pin effect do you use? I have here the red giant warp plugin installed. So I'm going to use this. If you don't have it, you can also use CC power pin and the precomp that is created works exactly the same, except that it uses the CC power pin effect that comes with after effects uh, and not the red giant warp plugin. But I prefer in general the red giant warp corner pin. So I use this one and click on okay. And now it takes a while to create this precomp. And in particular, since it's a quite long clip, you're yeah, over a thousand frames, this really might take some time. So don't be irritated if this loads now. Uh, yeah, this is uh, perfectly normal and don't think your After Effects is crashed. It just takes some time. Now the precomp is finished. And if you look, it looks exactly as before, nothing changed. But if you solo the wall precomp, you can see that this one only contains exactly this region that we exported. Yeah, so only here our wall region and it exactly fits to the background behind it. And if we double click on the precomp, you can see we have now a new like perspective on our clip where we can nicely look at our footage and the wall is perfectly stabilized, perfectly static. Yeah, and in this perspective, we can now build our Tetris game uh, on the wall and the Tetris game we build in this composition then will be automatically transferred to this final composition we wanted to have. But this is something I'm going to show you in the next part of this tutorial. So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, learned a bit about tracking and in particular adjusting a track in Mocha. Again, my name is Matthias and I look forward to see you in the next tutorial.